Hey, it's Earth Castle. Floors are a very underrated part of map making. Usually people just write them off as something the player would never see, or something for them to stand on, but they are so much more than that. You may have heard the term, a game is great when it gets the player to look upward, but that also applies to looking downward. A detailed floor is just as good as a detailed wall or ceiling, which is why today I'll be teaching you how to make detailed floors in the Hammer Editor. This is a sequel to my video on detailed walls, and pairs very well with it, so I'd recommend watching that one too if you haven't already. Also, feel free to join my Discord server if you're a fan of the channel, need any Hammer Editor help, or just want to talk to other people about Hammer. And you can join my Patreon to get exclusive map teasers, early videos, and much more. Anyway, on to the video. Here we start off with the most basic floor possible. A single dev texture brush. Most people will just put a floor texture on it and call it a day, but not here we don't. The first thing I'm going to do is give the floor a theme. I went with a street since it works well with my urban style of mapping and allows for a lot of creativity, not only in the props and brushes, but elevation of certain parts of the ground. I also put a curved sidewalk in to break up the blocky nature of it and to add some interesting shapes to the floor. After that was a little bit of texture work for the sidewalk and a couple props, just to get a feel for the palette and theme of what I was going for. For the eye catcher of the floor, I decided to make a sewer vent. I started by using the absolutely evil carve tool and carved a small section for it with a metal textured brush. Then I used the evil carve tool again to make a hole in the metal. I know, shocking. Don't worry, I won't use the carve tool again. Or will I? No, I, I really won't. I really don't. After that, I sloped the top of the sewer vent inward for some interesting angles, made sure to seal the inside up and give it a black texture, and put a grate over the front. I think it looks great, and breaks up the repeating sidewalk quite nicely, even if it's quite complex to make. After that, I got to adding more props. A good tip to follow when adding props is not to add too many props to the point it looks over cluttered, but don't add too little to the point that everything is just flat. It's a hard balance to find, but it makes a lot of difference. The same applies for using too much or too little of the same type of props. You want consistency, but not just 100 copy and pasted the props, and also not 100 different kinds of props. After that I added a smoke entity right in front of the sewer vent to make it seem like smoke is coming out of it. Effects are a really underrated thing in Hammer, mostly because they are much harder to do than brushes and props, but they really look great when used. Without them, everything is completely static and lifeless. Of course, I had to add in decals. They are the best way possible to spruce up the textures of the floor. They can add new colours, contribute to environmental storytelling, be used as general detail, or literally anything you want. It's like making your own texture. Another tip is to use overlays instead of decals in most cases, since overlays can be scaled to any shape or size, and you get to choose what brush faces they apply to. I also added some more props since you can really never have enough, most of the time. I used props that are more unique than just concrete barriers and trash bins too, since they all kind of blended into the colour palette of the sidewalk. I also added my trademark Earth Castle smog. It's just four dust cloud entities low near the ground, creating a low hanging fog effect. And finally, the lighting. I didn't really mention it in the previous wall tutorial, but lighting can change a scene entirely. Bad lighting will make a great wall look horrible, and great lighting will make a great wall even better. Same goes for floors. I decided to use a custom Jacob Robin skybox since it looks so good. I would highly encourage using them if you ever get the chance since looking at the same boring Half-Life 2 skyboxes on every map can get repetitive. Especially Jacob Robbins, they look so cinematic and realistic. And finally, for the lighting that isn't in the skybox, I put a single street light down. I used a neat trick using timer entities to make the light randomly flicker. It's the same method I used in GM Midnight Dream for the subway station, along with the trademark smoke. And that's finally it. The result is absolutely stunning and looks so much better than the starting floor. It's surprising how much detail can be fit into a small space even like this. It really makes all the difference, even if some people won't consciously notice it. 
I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, feel free to join my server or join my Patreon and that's all for now, see ya! After that, I slopped it. Oh my god, I slopped. I slopped. <laughs> I slopped. Okay, hold on.